So the other day I went to E3. Now, I would never been to E3 before in my life, and I've always wanted to go out to E3. And those of you who don't know what E3 is, it's basically a gaming conference of sorts. It's where all the gaming companies get together, they give you a bunch of news and updates that they're saving for this one time of year, and they tell you about the new consoles that are going to be released, new games, new software, new peripheral items, all that good shit. It's a, it's a good time. It's a geek's paradise, and I'm a bit of a techno geek, so I, you know, I like the video games and all that shit. Shit, and I wanted to go out there, and I've never been to L.A. before, and I figured, you know, what the hell, I'm filthy rich from all YouTube money, and I'll just, you know, get a plane ticket and fly out there, so I did just that. Now, when I got to L.A., I do what any normal person does when you go out to L.A. for the first time, that is, of course, you know, get a convertible, go on the strip, pick up a bunch of hookers, get a cheap hotel room, trash the shit out of it, got drunk off my ass, had basically an all-night sex fest the night before E3 started, and, I mean, one of the strippers, excuse me, one of the prostitutes, I think she was a stripper as well, but she was also a transvestite. And that's, um, well, that's a story for another time. We'll get to that later. Um, I just stumbled my ass into E3 that next morning. I didn't even sleep. I was just so hungover. And I wasn't going to miss the convention after I flew out there for it. So, you know, I just waddled my ass into E3. And then right off the bat, Jesus Christ, the goddamn Nintendo conference was first up. And I gotta admit, I don't like Nintendo. I've hated all their consoles that have come out. They haven't made a good gamer console since they released Pong in 1902. And I have hope that they could get better in the future, but at, that hope is just, you know, slim to none. And I gotta admit, I was hands down more impressed by Nintendo than anyone else. Because they demoed their new console. Now... I know everyone out there is in agreement with their past several consoles being complete shit. I'm talking about the Nintendo Penis that's currently out right now, the Gamecock, the Jack 64, all that shit. Worthless, worthless systems. Not a single good game on one of those consoles. I mean, even the controllers, like, have you seen the controllers for these consoles? They're terrible. They look like medieval weaponry. They're awful. But anyway... They had the new Nintendo console, which they demoed, and they released the name of it, which is called the Nintendo Dick Box. Now, I do gotta say I have a problem with the title. Um, not so much that it's kind of creepy that little kids are gonna be going the, to their mothers going, Mommy, Mommy, I wanna play with my Dick Box. I mean, I mean, what kind of sick, perverted person would think up a name like that? But I have more of a problem with the fact that it's kind of ripping off what Microsoft named their system, which is the Xbox. I mean, how can Nintendo call their system the Dick Box when there's already an Xbox? Um, can we say copyright infringement much? But you know what? I can look past that because the games they demoed for the Nintendo Dick Box were amazing. The first game they demoed at the conference was, get this, Mario vs. Mortal Kombat. Did you guys ever think they were going to have Super Mario Brothers meet the world of Mortal Kombat? I know I sure as hell didn't. And this game delivered. They didn't show too much gameplay, mainly they just showed a cutscene from the game, and it was very true to how these characters would act in the worlds if they met together. Now, they showed some cutscene where it was Raiden versus Super Mario, and Mario does a thing where he jumps on top of Raiden, hits him on the head, and you know expects him to be dead. And Raiden's like, why did you do that? That was so annoying. And Mario's like, well, you're supposed to be dead. I jumped on top of you. And Raiden's like, no, actually, that did nothing. You're stupid. Get the hell out of here. And then Raiden summons some sort of orb to come down, and it just transports Mario into some nether realm. And when Mario awakens in this world, he sees all, get this, he sees all all the Walt Disney characters around him. I mean, when that just popped up on the screen, the, the conference room just went nuts. Everyone was like, oh my god, we weren't expecting this. I mean, think about it. You see a game called Mario vs. Mortal Kombat. You're not expecting to see Disney characters in this game. Well, what happened next was even more surprising. Mario's up. He's like, hi, guys. You guys are G-rated, just like me. And then all of a sudden, Pluto comes running out of nowhere and just bites Mario right on the hand and just rips his hand clean off his body. And Mario's standing there screaming as the, the bloody stump is just squirting all over the place. He's like, why did you do that? And then Minnie Mouse just comes running up with a crowbar in her hand and just goes, boom, hits Mario right in the face, just knocks him out cold. Mario is just 
in a puddle of his own blood on the ground, and Goofy comes over, he goes, oh, well, I guess it's my turn. And Goofy just unzips his pants, and then just starts teabagging Mario. He starts teabagging Mario while he's knocked out on the ground. Oh my god, it was amazing. Uh, like I said, I've been a hater of a Nintendo for years, but th this is it. This is it. This is finally Nintendo saying, look, we are breaking out of the mold of these family-friendly, kid-conscious games. We want to give people what they want, that hardcore, gritty, just, just rip-your-head-off type mentality games. That's fantastic. Because it didn't just stop there. They demoed a new Metroid vs. Zelda game, and it wasn't so much a competitive game. It was basically a kind of like a how-to and instructional game. Now, they had Zelda from Zelda, but they had some character named Sapphire. It was a girl, and I guess they didn't want to keep her original name from Metroid. They just called her Sapphire. I guess it was because in the game, she's actually a stripper. And she, you just go around the game with Sapphire, and you perform in front of men, and like you're stripping. But she's really depressed about that, and she lives in a shitty apartment with Zelda, and has to go home there every night. And, you know, she talks to Zelda about... You know, oh, I, I hate being treated like a piece of meat, you know, I just don't find guys desirable anymore. And then that's when the game goes into what it's really meant for, which is a lesbian instructional video. And it's very good from that point of things. Um, it's It delves into the world of experimentation and it does it very well. And it's, it's good for kids to learn this early on, too, because if you want to dabble in lesbianism, you should really know what you're doing rather than just going into a cold turkey. It's a lot of instruction on how to scissor. Um, they, they have this little side quest game where it says, what will hurt if I stick this in Zelda? And you have to pick which item would, would hurt if you stuck it. Well, you know, I don't want to give away too many details. It'll spoil the game. But very good game. Um, the showering scenes were very good. I like that part the most. And um, all in all, Nintendo is really, really moving in the right direction right now. So... I just went from that conference, went right over to the PlayStation conference after that. I missed the first half of the PlayStation conference, but I didn't care because um, I saw the one game that I wanted to see, which everyone knows I'm a Final Fantasy geek. I, just, I won't lie. I love the Final Fantasy games, and they were demoing Final Fantasy 27 there. Um, I don't know what happened to the other ones. I guess the other ones were released in Japan. And this Final Fantasy, however, this I think this is going to win a lot of people back to the franchise because Final Fantasy 27 just goes in a complete direction, completely different direction, I should say, with the game, in that all the characters are dogs. I know, I, I, I'm just as surprised as everyone else. Like, there's, there, there's no sort of, like, human-esque characters at all. It's all dogs. And it's a little confusing at first, because the only means of communication is barking, and, like, all the commands on the screen are, like, woof, woof, bark, growl, snarl, and all that other shit. And it's kind of hard to understand, but I figured, you know, once you get the hang of it, the game will be much more easy to work through because I couldn't even get a single attack off in the game when I was playing it. But it looked amazing. I mean, the graphics on it were amazing. Uh... I couldn't do much, like I said, because I couldn't read what was on the screen, but... All I can tell you is th there's a lot of humping, a lot of leg humping, just, you know, all the stuff you would expect in a world where you basically go around in a dog's world. Who hasn't wanted to experience a game like that? Final Fantasy 27, they got the preliminary release date out, it's uh, spring of 2019, and I've already got that shit on pre-order, I don't know about you guys, but that looks fantastic, and it's showing that PlayStation is moving ahead of the pack right now because they got that as an exclusive for their console only. So, very good news for PlayStation owners like myself. The PlayStation 3 is going to be around for many years to come and it is not going to disappoint. Um, I was going to go to the Xbox convention after that, but I kind of got sidetracked and I looked at some games that were out for just multiple consoles. Like, they have a Spongebob game called Spongebob and the Jellyfish Fields and it was it was pretty much just a rehash of what the show has already given us. Like, I, they, they showed some cutscene where it was like SpongeBob and Patrick playing dice, and Patrick 
takes up more money from his round of the dice game than he's supposed to, and SpongeBob just, you know, starts beating the shit out of him, and it's right in front of Squidward's house, and Squidward gets all uppity going, yo, why are you beating him up on my front lawn? You're getting his blood all over my lawn, and then SpongeBob pulls out a gun and goes, don't call me SpongeBob, call me Sam, and I'm like, I don't get it. It's, it's a very confusing game, and like I said, a lot of this stuff has been done on the show already, so I just, I'll, I'll take a pass on that. And, you know, there's all the other ordinary games there, Street Fighter 4 Part 2 and other shit like that, and just other lame shit that we're already done and tired with. We want some originality, and that's why Nintendo is coming through just like gangbusters at this convention, but... I haven't seen Microsoft's press conference, but before I went over to Microsoft's press conference, I had to go to the bathroom because, I'm sorry, but I just, I just had to take a dump. So I went into the bathroom and I noticed in one of the stalls that Undertaker Freak 1127 was giving out hand jobs for $10, and I was like, why are you charging $10? Don't you usually charge 5 And he's like, well, you know, times are tough and there's inflation and stuff and the guy's got to eat, and I was like... Alright, I guess that makes sense. So I went into the, the stall next to his to take a shit, and I just, you know, I ended up passing out, because I was just, I was just so tired, and I was getting comfortable sitting there, and uh, I woke up about 185 hours later, and the lesson to be learned from this, when you pass out on a toilet, is you don't have to wake up, and you're pissing shit. I mean, how many times have we got drunk, like, passed out on the bed, and woke up, woke up in our own filth? It's happened to all of us, exactly. When you pass out on a toilet, that's, the, that's like the perfect solution. I was like, I, I'm so glad I came to this convention because I figured out when you get drunk, just sit on the toilet and pass the hell out. Lesson learned. So anyways, I woke up and it's now a couple days later and I walk out to the convention floor and I was like, well, where's the Microsoft press conference? I want to see that. And they're like, uh, the E3 thing is over. This is a Girl Scout convention now. And I was like, oh. So I just went to, back to the bathroom, sat down, and just went back to bed. I don't even remember how I got home. Were you expecting me to buy Thin Mints at the Girl Scout convention? That's getting old, people. Why are you still watching this video? There's not even anything else that's going to happen in it.